Welcome to Joel Horn Off Grid. This is Crystal, the Wilderness Quilter. In this video, we're showing you how we made an ultralight down backpacking quilt. If you're interested in DIY backpacking projects, be sure to subscribe and click on the bell so you're notified when we upload more gear related how to videos. For this video, we didn't get all the shots we wanted, but think you can still get a good idea of our process. You can also find the materials list and written instructions at wildernessquilter.com. Just click on the link in the description below. Our quilt making process differs from others we've seen in that you're creating baffled cloth from which you then cut your quilt rather than cutting the fabric first and then sewing in baffle strips. This diagram illustrates a side view of the continuous baffled fabric with measurements for our quilt. With the calendared side in, fold your taffeta in half to form a double thickness rectangle 58 inches wide by 2 yards long. Next, mark the fold at each edge with a sharpie. Lay out your no seam mesh, then starting 3.5 inches from one end, draw a line across the width of the mesh every 3 inches along the full length of the yardage. And avoid black mesh because getting visible lines for our continuous baffle design was nearly impossible. Now open your taffeta and lay it out flat, calendared side up with the fold in front of you. Lay your straight edge across the taffeta 4 inches from the fold and run a line of tape above that 4 inch stitch line. Then stick your mesh to the line of tape a half inch from the end where you began marking the mesh and press it firmly in place. Now sew your mesh to the taffeta on the left side of the tape. Always backstitch at each end of every seam or stitch line. Rotate your fabric so you're working on the other half and pull the mesh away from the tape. Then peel the tape away from the taffeta and hang it up to reuse. We reused each strip of tape 10 to 12 times which allowed us to do the entire quilt with about half a roll instead of over three. Just be sure your fingers are clean while handling the tape. Fold the mesh toward you to get it out of the way and smooth out the taffeta. Lay your straight edge across the taffeta 6 inches from the fold and run a line of tape. Align the first marked line on your mesh with the left side of the tape and press the mesh into place. Sew your mesh to the taffeta on the left side of the tape. Rotate your fabric again and remove the tape as before. This time pull the mesh and the taffeta it's sewn to toward you. Smooth out the taffeta you'll be working on using painter's tape to hold it in place if necessary. Lay your straight edge 4 inches from the previous stitch line on that side. Run a line of tape above the straight edge and press the next marked line on your mesh into place. Once so again, sew your mesh to the taffeta on the left side of the tape. Making sure that you're alternating sides each time, repeat rotating your fabric and sewing the mesh in place along the taffeta yardage until you get 4 inches or so from the end. Be prepared for this to take quite a bit of time. To make handling the fabric easier when sewing, roll the edges to the center and loosely fold it toward the top before taking it to your sewing machine. Trim away the excess mesh when you're done sewing it to the taffeta. Here's an end view of your completed triangular baffles. To close the end of your quilt, sew your taffeta layers together one quarter inch from the edge across the bottom and fold on the stitch line. Then sew across the folded fabric close to the raw edge. Now sew across the taffeta one and a half inches from the bottom to form the casing area and then baste one inch from the bottom 
to create your casing fold line. The bottom end of your quilt will now look like this with the sewn down raw edge and finished casing area with casing fold line. Now create the casing and casing fold line across the top of your quilt measuring in from the fold. To create the foot in taper, fold your quilt in half lengthwise, making sure your edges and ends match up. Now make a mark 20 inches from the fold on the bottom of the quilt and 24 inches from the bottom on the side of the quilt. Please note that I had already marked the bottom of the quilt, so all you see me doing in the video is marking the side. Now connect those two marks and cut away the excess fabric and then trim the excess mesh along the sides. Notice that I'm trimming both sides at once with my rotary cutter. If you are using scissors, you'll probably trim one side at a time after drawing a line between your marks. Carefully line your taffeta on one side and sew a half inch or so from the edge from top to bottom to close. Be sure to catch the baffle ends in the seam. I used fork pins to hold the fabric in place, but regular straight pins will work too. And while I wouldn't recommend pinning through taffeta anywhere that down will be, these pinholes are within the seam allowance. Now fold along the stitch line and fold the raw edge under, then sew along the folded fabric to finish. Instead of pins, I'm using small sewing clips to hold the fabric together. You could also use binder clips. And this is how your unstuffed quilt will look. As you can see, the quilt fabric with baffles weighs just six and a half ounces. And here's how you calculate how much down to put in each baffle tube. To get the down into each baffle, we used a wrapping paper tube and a plunger made from a Costco gallon milk jug lid attached to a stick. Weigh your empty tube and then start packing it with down. To keep the down from drifting everywhere, put the end of the tube deep into the bag. To contain the down on our first quilt, we stuffed it in the bathtub with the shower curtain closed, but found that to be way too awkward. With the second quilt, we filled it out in the room with the door closed to eliminate air movement. You just have to be careful and not move too fast. Weigh the tube with down, subtracting the tube weight, and then add or subtract down until you have the amount you calculated for your baffle. And FYI, what you see on the counter that looks like wadded up toilet paper is really used dryer sheets. Keep a few close by to rub on your hands and on the tube and plunger in to reduce static cling. Insert your down deep into each baffle, getting it well away from the opening. After your quilt is stuffed, carefully align your taffeta and sew a half inch or so from the edge to close. As before, be sure to catch the baffle ends in the seam. Then fold along the stitch line and fold the raw edge under and sew along the folded fabric to finish. For each snap tab, cut a four inch piece of grow grain ribbon, fold it in half and attach a snap piece at the folded end. Be sure that you make a male and female tab for each snap location. We put three snaps on our quilt at the top, the bottom, and the top of the taper, but you can add as many as you like. We used cam snaps, spelled with a K, which are plastic and very lightweight. I was skeptical about how well they'd hold up when I bought them years ago to use on doll clothes, but then we used them on other ultralight gear and they've proven to be sturdy so far. And if they do ever fail, they'll be easy to replace. Position a male or female snap tab at both ends of your quilt within the casing area just to the left of your casing fold line. Note that the tab will overlap your casing seam line. Be sure the halves align so that they snap properly when you wrap the quilt around you. 
I suggest pinning them in place and double checking before you sew. When you're absolutely positive the tabs are positioned correctly, sew them to the quilt. Run back and forth across the tab three or four times to make sure it's secure. Now attach snap tabs to the finished edge at the top of the taper the same way you did in your casing area, but run two lines of stitching close together across the ribbon for added security. Then trim away the excess ribbon. And if you want more snaps along the sides of your quilt, now is the time to add them. To complete your casings, lay your quilt out and run a line of tape next to the seam line. We chose to use a new strip of tape for each casing to make sure that the fabric stayed firmly in place and because the tape got a little mangled when we removed it. You'll notice that our snap tabs overlap the seam line. This was intentional to provide extra security and the overlapping ribbon won't show once the casing is finished. Now fold the casing fabric over on the fold line and stick the edge to the tape. Don't worry if some of the tape is visible. Sew on top of your casing stitch line to complete the casing. Be sure to back stitch at both ends. You'll likely need to start sewing an inch or two in from the edge because the snap will interfere with your presser foot. So after you get to the end of the casing, turn the quilt around and sew toward the snap to finish. Be sure to check the underside frequently to push the fabric end down out of the way so they don't get caught by the needle. Then remove the tape. Cut a three inch piece of grow grain ribbon and fold it in half. Insert the end of the shock cord between the layers and sew back and forth across the ribbon several times. Then move about a quarter inch away from that stitch line and sew across the ribbon several more times. Attach a safety pin or bodkin to the ribbon and feed your shock cord through the casing. Now sew through the casing back and forth a few times across the end of the ribbon and then add a cord lock to the other end. Repeat the process for the other end of your quilt and you're done. And if you want to add some bling, you can always put beads with your initials on the end of your shock cord at the top of your quilt. And here's a demo of the quilt in action. Wow, it looks like someone had way too much caffeine. Either that or off-grid really sped up this video clip. Remember that this is a summer quilt or would be good for really warm sleepers. It's designed for someone in the mid 5 foot range but would be simple to modify to fit any height. Also, to upgrade it to a warmer quilt, all you'd have to do is scale it up to increase the thickness for more loft. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment to let us know what you think and if you plan to use our easy continuous baffle method to create your own quilt. Also, would you be interested in how to make our easy down booties seen during the quilt demo? And don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications when we post more easy DIY ultralight gear projects.